And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Stephen Foster story. The Stephen Foster story is essentially a classic love story. Um, it's, it's sort of written like a 1950s movie musical um, where there's a story of a man and there's some conflict and the woman that he loves and there's conflict with that too. But in addition to that classic love story, we have the struggle of a young artist uh, learning how to write music and make a living, which was a brand new thing in the United States at the time. He was really the first American who decided to make a living writing songs. Uh, at that point, early 1800s, 1830s, people did it as a hobby, but no one ever tried to make a living writing songs. And so he struggled uh, for a while, uh, up until his death, really, of, of being financially stable and successful. But he was really the person who kind of created this industry, albeit inadvertently. You know, he didn't set out to create the American music industry as we know it today. But when he was around, there were no managers, there were no producers, there were no copyright laws to protect artists. I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. I swing to Louisiana, my trumpet to see. It rained all night, the day I left, the weather it was dry. The sun so hot, I froze to death. And so his friends and his family uh, struggled with supporting him in his endeavor to become a songwriter and to make a living selling music. Uh, it also follows uh, his love of a woman named Jane, who he references in Jeannie with the Light Brown Hair. Uh, his nickname for her was Jeannie, and our story follows their love story as well. Beautiful. And I wrote it for the most beautiful girl. Our show is obviously an entertainment show, but it's also historic. Uh, we take, uh, there's a little bit of literary license in any kind of a performance, of course, but uh, you think about someone like Stephen Foster, who is really the father of American music being portrayed here, and what he went through, uh, the difficulties that he went through. Uh, copyright laws were not what they are today, and he struggled with just getting credit for his music. And then, of course, the issue of slavery, which we deal with here, and uh, talk about the difficulty and the terribleness of that. Uh, and uh, we portray, though, that in the light that uh, uh, Stephen Foster and many others realized that slavery was wrong and needed to end in our country. And we do that in a very positive way. And uh, so I think we've been really successful in that as well. also see this great connection that Stephen Foster had with Kentucky and with Bardstown specifically. You know, Stephen Foster was from Pittsburgh, uh, but he visited uh, my old Kentucky home back in 1852. Uh, he lived in Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, and then eventually New York City where he died at age 37. But just to have that connection uh, with his music, with his family, the Rowans, is just something really cool. Uh, there's some kind of magic here, you know, whether it's just the cast being together, whether it's Stephen Foster's music, the fact that we're on the grounds of my old Kentucky home state park, Stephen Foster's cousins, the, the Rowan family lived over in my old Kentucky home. Uh, I think all of it kind of comes together in the beautiful surrounding of the J. Dan Talbot Amphitheater to just kind of make something special. Producing theater in any venue can be challenging. Producing theater outdoors is insanely challenging. We are producing a Broadway-style musical in June, July, and August in Kentucky in 
the humidity of the South, and we, and we have a Christmas scene in the show. So we have cast members who are fully dressed for Christmas with scarves and gloves and hats, um, and it's super challenging. And we really do have to build stamina um, in our cast to be able to sustain on a nightly basis performing in such uh, you know, heavy wool costumes to represent our Christmas scenes. We also have the elements to battle with, um, whether it's the rain, the heat, the humidity, uh, all of those affect our audience and our ability to just get through the show. We'll perform in a light rain, uh, but anything more than a light rain, nobody's gonna sit for. Uh, and of course we have co costumes to worry about damaging and set pieces to worry about damaging in, in the rain. So it's an additional challenge. Um, on top of what it already takes to produce theater. Because we get travelers from all over the country, all over the world. Uh, last year we had folks from over 45 states and uh, 20 plus countries, from uh, Canada and Mexico to Australia and Japan. You know, people have come 12, 13, 14 hours uh, to Bardstown, to Kentucky, to do the Bourbon Trail and to see some history, but also to see the Stephen Foster story. And, you know, that's one of the reasons that we try so hard to get it in out here. Uh, but we will finish it uh, wherever we can. As a cast member, each night when we sing Mellow Kentucky Home, it doesn't matter if it's 70 degrees or 97 degrees outside, uh, anytime we sing Mellow Kentucky Home, I always get goosebumps. Uh, and it's, it's kind of hard to explain, you know, when you've done the show, I've done the show over 200 times, um, even now, just watching the show and, and, you know, watching the audience see the show for the first time. I think when you sing Mellow Kentucky Home, doesn't matter if your home is Kentucky, if it's Pittsburgh, if it's uh, Mexico City, or if it's Paris. You know, you can imagine that connection to home, the longing for family, the longing for home, and the nostalgia that, uh, that is brought up with the lyrics. And I think that's why that song is so powerful and why the show has been successful for over 58 years. <laughs>